what this verse has done has broken down the different characteristics of people that you're dealing with. Okay, if somebody listening to me right now, Zerubbabel, when you look at his name in the Hebrew, it means one who is sown in Babylon, or one who is born in Babylon, or one who is born in bondage. So the Holy Ghost sends the prophet to say, I need you to speak to some folks that don't know what freedom is in me. They was born in bondage and don't know what freedom looks like. So I've got a group of people that's a bunch of Zerubbabel's. Amen. But now the scripture brings to life Zerubbabel's father. And when I looked at that thing in Hebrew, it said, one who asked God. See, if I ask God, that means I've had a conversation with him. That means I communicate with him. And if that was his father, then his father knew what the house looked like before the son was born in bondage. So God said to the prophet, I need you not only to speak to the son, I need you to speak to the father. Because the father got some old memories of what things look like in the better days. Okay, better days, better days, better days. The son may not know, but daddy do. Okay. So now, then, then, then the scripture says, I need you to speak to Joshua. Okay, if we look at that in the correct Hebrew, it comes Yahshua, which means Savior of salvation. But watch this. The scripture identified not only Joshua, but it said the son of the priest. So that means uh, there's a category of folks in the house that's walking priestly, or should I say as high priest, in this season of bondage. So God said, hey, prophet, I need you to give not only a word of encouragement to those born in bondage, I need you not only to give a word of encouragement to those who seen the former years before bondage, I need you to see the edify those prophets, those preachers, those teachers that are in this season that will still be a priest for me, regardless of how bad your life looks. Then he says, watch this. Then he says, I also want you to speak to the residue. Okay, so I'm looking at him in deep. Saying, well, who is that? The residue is the remnant. However, as the prophet writes here, those are the folks that want to live right, but not have a right relationship. We got plenty of folks in the house that's perpetrating the front of a relationship with God. So God says to the prophet, I'm including a word for them as well. There's nobody that's really got the wool over my eyes that I don't see what kind of relationship they got with me. In the same turn, y'all know there's some folks that ain't even in the church that say, I don't need church. I don't kill nobody. I don't shoot at nobody. I don't steal. I think I live right. So God says, I got you inclusive as well. Now, it doesn't exempt you because you live right, but there's a righteous calling on your life. So God sends a prophet in the midst. God sends a prophet, watch this, that comes from the same stature. Y'all know it's tight, but it's still right. Some folks want to qualify the prophet that God sends them. Uh, but I remember a lot of word from all 66 books. Ain't hey, none of them going with a silver spoon in their mouth. Uh, everybody came from a place of a struggle. Uh, as the man of God said here earlier, everybody got something going on in them. Uh, so there's nobody that's accepted even when it comes to the spokesman for God. So see, uh, when you understand that the prophet is real, that teaching or saying something on God's behalf. They can say, yep, in there, done that, wore the same t-shirt, and got the same bag of Doritos. Your situation ain't no worse than what I done been through. I done been through some struggle. I done been through some pain. But I know greater is coming.
see if I was a devout reader of the word, I would come to a conclusion early in my life. My own opinion don't matter. God's opinion is the only one that matters. If I read it in the word, that's it. Amen. It's been endorsed. So while we sitting here, filling our thinking and our brain cells, uh, trying to reason uh, with our situation, why are we trying to reason with how the world sees ourselves? Because in the reality of the matter, the world will always see you in dark speech. Okay, so I'm still looking at me deep on that. The world will look at you and tell you how it sees you. Okay, okay. Let me take some folks down memory lane, man of God. Because some look at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, some of you that graduated from high school, y'all remember, your own family came and said, man, I thought you was going to be this, but you ended up that. Girl, I thought you was going to do this, but you turned up that. So the world was just telling you in dark speech, how it saw you. And what happens is we sit there like a Oompa Loompa and accept that uh, as how we see our future. I said this before and I'll say it again. Quit letting your friends prophesy your future. So, so, everybody good, right? My bad. We good? We good? Okay. All right, y'all ready for a little? Okay. So now, verse four. Verse four. He says, "Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Joseph, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts." Right. Got some revelation in that. So now, by the word, he tells you to be strong. Yeah. All right, when we look at strong, strong means to be encouraged, be empowered. Yeah. However, the prophet, once again, gives a word for each category of people. Yeah. They ain't want nobody to be left out. You know, because some folks, you know, I'll be real about this. Go ahead, go ahead. Some folks, even in the body of Christ, have an issue just because they don't get a positive word directly to them. Just because I ain't say you by name, then they feel excluded. That's like old school. Then they want to take their stick and ball and don't want to play with nobody. So God says, okay, prophet, I need you to make sure you articulate to each one of them to be strong, be encouraged, be empowered. However, there's another prerequisite in the verse. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? The word says work. Okay, then that means what causes me to become strong and empowered is based on the labor that I do. Okay, that, that, that may be still touching somebody unless I'm talking to the ceiling lights. Some people got to understand uh, what encourages you and empowers you uh, is when you put your hands to labor at something. Uh, see, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Uh, but see, if I ain't doing something, uh, it causes me not to be active in receiving my encouragement. Uh, see, if I can still be real with that, uh, that means you still in idolatry if you don't put your hands at some labor, okay? Idolatry is worshiping something that does nothing. So if you don't do nothing with the word, then that means you practicing what you worship. So the word tells you to be encouraged by what you begin to labor at. See, God don't need nobody that won't do nothing. Amen. God needs somebody that will be active and call things to do. Even in Genesis chapter 1, God's spirit moved upon the base of the water. So if I came from his tapestry, if I got a piece of him that makes me me, then something in me should be a creative force that's telling me to do something. That means I change the atmosphere. That means I change what my current situation is. 